Hey everyone, how's it going? I am Joe Bender, Community Manager at Hero, and we have come together once again for the Hero Monthly Developer Call. This is a fairly new initiative as this is only the second one. However, I could not be more excited about it because the first call was amazing. We didn't really know how it was gonna go, what people wanted to talk about, and some of the organic discussion was great. People chiming up, talking about problem solving in the Stacks ecosystem, overcoming engineering obstacles, uh, cool innovation happening. Uh, so we're gonna do all that again. And at top of mind this week is gonna be hyperchains and arbitrary transaction signing. Um, let's dive right on in. Purpose, why are we here? We're here for four big reasons. Hero is developer obsessed. We want nothing more than to equip your tool belt with all of the digital hammers and saws you need to create cool stuff. We want to strive to engage we can't learn about our products and how you're using them unless we talk to you. So we really want this open forum for people to come in, feel comfortable, speak their mind, uh, positives, negatives of building in stacks, how we can help each other out, invite and inspire. We want people to story tell here about the cool stuff they're building to demonstrate to others what they could build. And listening, I got both AirPods in. We're here to uh, elicit feedback, um, hear about developer experience, pretty much anything related to our products or any products you're using to build in the Stacks ecosystem. Nice, someone's on admitting duties for me. Shout out and thanks. Um, why don't I shoot it over to Sabi to talk a little bit about some of our contributors over the past month. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, this is um, yeah, this is this is really encouraging to see. I, I, I briefly mentioned this in the last call too, but uh, once again, folks like you all, the developers, the community members in this call, uh, thank you for doing what you are doing and continue doing what you're doing. It's it's really encouraging and motivation motivating for us who are trying to like you know think about developer productivity, think about the tooling and the scaffolding that you all need to build those fascinating apps for the Web three in the crypto world. Uh, so yeah, so the main uh, we had a lot of contributions from different people. Uh, I, I think this slide just like speaks to it: the Clarinet, the Web Wallet, the Explorer, Stack Shares, and the API. Uh, these are those front-facing products and the developers like you all have been using day in and day out. Uh, I just want to like take a moment to recognize them, uh, right? So I mean, it's super critical and very important for the community to like evolve. And without you all, we won't be having this type of conversation even. So thank you very much. I just want to like give kudos to like many folks here or like even contributing across different products. Like for example, McIntyre94, I don't know if you're on this call, shout out to you. Uh, you know, you were, you are, you are in every product that we are working on. So it's, it's really encouraging to see repetitive contributions, repeating contributions from folks like you all. Uh, yeah, please continue to do that. Thank you very much. Back to you, Joe. Um, amazing contributions from everyone this month. Big moves in Clarinet, Web Wallet, Stacks.js, API Explorer. I'll say it once, I'll say it a million times, it takes a village to raise a blockchain. And um, the more you contribute to building the tools, the better you'll be at using them. You know, they say the best way to learn is by teaching. So the more you get your hands dirty helping us build the tools, the better you'll be at using them. All right, everyone, we have arrived at my personal favorite section of the call, the smart contract of the month. Um, this month, we are talking about DNS, the blockchain naming system. This is a gargantuan contract on the Stacks blockchain. And if you have done any popping of the hood, looking at consensus, looking at the Genesis block, you have probably stumbled across this contract because it is deployed with the Genesis block. It is that integral. The blockchain naming system is a network system that binds Stacks usernames to off-chain state without relying on any central points of control. Um, it was introduced in Stacks 1.0, BNS is an OG, and Stacks accounts can then be referenced with a unique user-owned human readable username. Um, BNS is implemented through Clarity smart contracts completely. The BNS contract supplies a set of public methods that uh, interact with the naming system. 
and developers can leverage the BNS package in the API to obtain data to a username. So you can see over there on the right is my Hero Web Wallet with my .btc name auto-populated in there. And also BNS is so active that it is the most uh, called contract of all time. I went to the Stacks Explorer this morning. There were 61,000 blocks. I queried 61,000 blocks and you can see BNS is far and away the most called contract. So I think it's an important one for us to dive into. All right, BNS names are categorized into three different uh, kind of hierarchy layers. There's the top level namespaces. Think about it as like a top level DNS domain. This is just ID. There's BNS names such as munib.id. These are names recorded onto the blockchain. And then there are subdomains, which allow for a little more versatility with a little less blockchain. Uh, they're off-chain, but anchored to the blockchain, and they allow for uh, even expanded URLs such as joe.personal.id. Over on the right is a table that shows you some of the uh, features that each of the categories affords you. All right, we've arrived at the fun part again, where we're gonna tear through a massive smart contract in two minutes. This is BNS, 41 functions, 46 variables, five maps, one tokens. There you can see my VS Code mini map. That's how large and in charge this contract is. Once again, it can be broken into two categories, functions that require a transaction to send. You gotta use a web wallet, you gotta use a transaction fee or read only functions, which don't need a transaction to call. You can use an API and it's almost read only. Um, also on the right, you can see from the Stacks API reference, the endpoints that are used to interact with DNS, such as getting a name price or uh, getting all the namespaces uh, available. All right, here we go, buckle up. Um, because uh, DNS is so huge, there are two functions in particular that are most leveraged. If you go to the contract in the Explorer, you will see these are the two functions that are called most. So first I'm gonna talk about not those functions. These are some of the other uh, configuration functions that uh, are just setting up the, the smart contract. We talked about uh, NFTs in the last smart contract of month. Here you can see it defining the NFT. There's a price ta uh, table for all of the prices of the various namespaces. It's map time grab your map. This contract uses boatloads of maps to just hold all the information. Think about all the stuff that you got to keep track of, the namespaces, all these names, the subdomains, all of the principles. So it does this all using maps. There's a namespace map, there's a name properties map, a namespace pre-orders map, an owner names map, a name pre-orders map. You got to keep all this information somewhere. There's also, like I showed last month, a bunch of gibberishy errors that are kind of default into Clarity. So when the contract uh, achieves one of these errors, it has a default set of error codes to display feedback to the user. Also, I had to include these funny character checks to the right um, of just kind of parsing each name and uh, categorizing what each character in the name is. And it's literally functions being like, is this A? No, it's not A. Is this B? No, definitely not B. Um, but you got to parse information, so you make sure it's verified. All right, now on to the fun, onto the meat of the contract, name pre-order and name register. This is straight from the Stacks Explorer, this contract. All it is is just pre-order register, pre-order register. It's the number one thing people are doing with this contract. So what are those contracts doing? The pre-order function, you're pre-ordering a name. Um, it pre-orders the name by telling all the BNS nodes the salted hash, and then it pays the registration fee. I had to Google salted hash. It's just throwing some random data into a hash to increase complexity, increase uniqueness, um, make it safer, more secure. It's code time. We got this people. Up at the top, we're defining a public function. Easy, that's the top level thing you do in Clarity Smart Contracts. Now, let is interesting. It uh, almost binds a list of variables to expressions. So it's it's beginning an expression of sorts. Um, next, we're ensuring the pre-order has not expired. I've got a little if statement there, double check that. You move down even further and we are ensuring that the salted hash function is the correct length. The original name plus salted hash should result in a standard length and we wanna make sure all the name pre-orders are that length. You gotta burn some stacks in the transaction fee to get the name. So there is a function to ensure that it is a non-zero amount of stacks being burnt. 
and executing burn the tokens. That is where you are finalizing the pre-order, setting the pre-order in the map name pre-orders that we looked at earlier. Boom. Oh, also asserts. What is asserts? Asserts is as simple as a yes or no answer. It's just checking if a Boolean is true or false. So some of these statements that start with asserts will return either a true or false Boolean. Name register, we got our name all pre-ordered. I'm ready to register it, let's go. What is the register function doing? It's revealing that salt hash to all the BNS nodes and assigning the name a public key hash in the zone file hash. Here we go, diving right back on in. Defining the function at the top, super easy. We're passing in a namespace, a name, that salt hash in the zone file hash. Let's jump into our let expression. Down there, we are checking if the name can be registered using that can name be registered function. What are we doing next? We're ensuring the namespace has been previously launched. We talked about namespaces, that top level domain. You can't register a name in a namespace that doesn't exist. So you gotta double check that. Um, there's also a 24 hour window of pre-order for um, of security and, uh, and almost a pending period. Um, that function there is calculating the time, ensuring it's been uh, 24 hours since the pre-order. Next up, the amount of stacks burnt must be greater than the cost of the name. You gotta pay the price if you want the name. And down at the bottom, once all the checks are complete, you mint or transfer the name. This is where the magic is happening and updating all of the stuff in the maps. We're gonna zoom in on that yellow portion there into the mint or transfer name function. Mint or transfer. That is how you get a name to another person. So this is a very significant method. Um, down at the bottom, you can see the crux of this method is the update name ownership function. So I'm gonna pull Leonardo DiCaprio and inception three levels into the contract to the update name function. And this is the juicy morsel in the smart contract that is really making it happen. You can see there is an NFT transfer function. It's providing the name of the um, name that is getting transferred and also the principle of the new owner that it's going to get transferred to. And then you can see it's updating the owner name map with the new name in the new namespace. Boom, we did it. Huge contract, short amount of time, big brains. If you wanna learn more about BNS on Stacks, there's a couple great links there. The Hero blog is the most beautiful, but also the most informational uh, knowledge base on Stacks. Check out the BNS blog post. Uh, the Stacks doc is definitely the single source of truth for reference pages and all of the tutorials and stuff pertaining to it. And there's also a great list of noteworthy smart contracts that you can tear through the BNS contract and see what all the functions are doing. Whew, smart contract of the month. Hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about BNS. I would definitely encourage you to check it out in the Stats Explorer. And I would even more encourage you to get your own BN, uh, BNS.BTC name or any of the other subdomains to really try it out and see it get populated in your hero wallet. Add a little bit of a personality to your hero wallet. Oh, I'm out of breath. Let's keep plowing forward. We're on to community topics. I'm gonna pass it over to Sabi to see what we're talking about this month. Yeah, just a quick reminder for folks uh, who joined the last call and folks who are new to this call. Uh, so we we, uh, we encourage you all, the community, the community developers, to uh, come in uh, with your topic of interest, uh, the the types of you know information that you are seeking or information that you want to share and socialize with other developers. All of those are welcome. Uh, so on that note, I'm just gonna like drop this uh, the GitHub repo that we have on this on this matter. Uh, you know, the, the, the topics that's of interest, topics that you want to evangelize, socialize, or get feedback on, uh, engage with other community developers on that, uh, feel free to add those as issues and, 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 you know, comment on issues that are already out there, vote for issues, you know, just be social. This is your time. So we are, uh, we, uh, the, the hero team is here to like come and engage with you and have, uh, have a, you know, very constructive, healthy dialogue about all of those topics. So I just want to throw that out, open out uh, with that uh, framing. Uh, so we yeah, want so, you to 51% attack our meeting with community topics. Throw them in there and we can <laughs> throw out all the agenda topics and just talk about what you all want to talk about. Exactly. So yeah, so we have three topics today. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, there, there are like some, some users or the developers in this call, like Merrick, uh, welcome again, and Josh, uh, welcome. 
so you all brought up this uh, in, the, in the last call as well. So we uh, will release this new feature feature in the Wallet Hero Web Wallet arbitrary message signing. Uh, so we have the Hero uh, the Web Wallet team uh, here on the call with us. So I'm just going to invite over Mark uh, as the product lead uh, for the Web Wallet, and there's also the engineers from the Web Wallet are here. Uh, so Mark, if you want to like unmute and maybe like start with a quick introduction for folks, and then jump right in. Yes, so um, last week we released arbitrary message signing and the Hero Wallet for web, which is the browser extension. Uh, it's sort of what the name suggests. You can now sign arbitrary messages, which means you can sign everything, anything and everything your heart could desire um, in a web app and um, sort of sign it in the wallet and go back to the web app and the web app can do whatever it needs to do with that message. Uh, there are a lot of different use cases. So sort of the possibilities here are infinite. Uh, we've heard interest as far as DAOs, DEXs, server-side authentication, uh, lots of ways to sort of do each of these things as well. I think people have had sort of questions about how do I use this to actually do one of these sort of use cases. So we have certain ideas we can kind of share with you. Uh, we're kind of curious to hear what your ideas are as well. And we can sort of just talk through it and talk about different sort of um, conceptual models and uh, particular ways of attacking those. Yeah, so get the next slide, uh, Jerry, please. Yeah, so there is this blog that yeah, that Mark was referring to. So uh, check it out. It's in the here.so blog uh, section in our website. And uh, and yeah, so uh, what we are going to do, uh, folks, uh, is we're going to like quickly run and run down these slides. And uh, hopefully the last 20 minutes, 25 minutes, it's going to be an open forum. Uh, so folks, if you have specific questions about arbitrary mass assigning or the use cases that we flashed in the previous slide, or something that's missing that we did not talk about. So bring all of those things in the last 20 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever we have remaining. Uh, we will have that open dialogue. So yeah, so that's topic number one. So keep that in mind. If, uh, yeah, please engage with us towards the end uh, with questions and comments and whatnot. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so we have hyperchains and uh, there's Sarla. Uh, maybe Sarla, please introduce yourself a little bit uh, and then like get going. Looks like I have to introduce myself as Elena. We've all been rechristened, looks like. But a few minutes ago, I was Sarala, uh, Director of Engineering here at Hero. I'm here to talk about what, you've, what you all have been uh, asking for, updates on hyperchains. So I'll be covering the um, comps that will be going out very shortly and have gone up today, and then the roadmap. and talk a little bit about the architecture for the MVP that will be shipping towards end of June and July timeframe. So about the comps. So if you want more uh, details on the, under the hood, uh, how hyperchains work, what is coming, uh, how the smart contract for hyperchains works, we have a really sweet primer video that Aaron put together that's on our YouTube channel as well as uh, we tweeted about it a few minutes ago as well. Um, so there's that. So do tune in for that, for all the juicy details. Um, and then we also have a forum post that went live today that has similar timeline updates. Um, we're looking for beta testers. So if you're interested in hopping on the hyperchain train, please do uh, reach out. There's a whole GitHub discussion, express your interest there, and we'll reach out to you. Um, on June 7th, there'll be a much deeper dive into the architecture, the use cases, the performance, uh, and more details on the timelines on June 7th in a blog post. Uh, we're also hosting a Twitter Spaces. Uh, that'll be a live conversation. Uh, please tune in. Uh, we will have a live Q&A session towards the end of it uh, on June 7th. Uh, following that, a week later, there'll be a Discord chat as well. So we're basically bombarding you with all the information that you want about hyperchain. So be careful what you wish for, like they say. Uh, next slide, please. On to the roadmap. Yeah, so this is the rough timeline at, at, at a very high level, what we are targeting. Uh, as you can see, we are inching closer towards the testnet launch. We have a, a deployed hyperchain miner on testnet. We are able to support withdrawals and deposits at the moment. The team is working towards uh, an NFT use case. We're making some consensus um, changes uh, to sort of BFD uh, uh, specific ones uh, for the first version. Um, and then we'll continue to test the NFT use case. That'll continue till June, July timeframe. 
Uh, towards July, we'll start our 2.1 readiness where we'll upgrade the hyperchains contract. So the testnet will have two versions running, one for 2.1 to get us ready whenever 2.1 goes live uh, versus 2.05. Uh, and then we'll commence the beta testing around that timeline. So please join in. Uh, we would want as much testing as possible from you, feedback from you, so we can one, establish the benchmarks for the throughput latency that we have and kind of tweak around that, as well as get, get, get uh, general feedback around the usability, the user experience, features you would like to see, what you hate about it, et cetera. Uh, we'll also kick off the integrations in our products with hyperchains that will include API integration, the wallet explorer, uh, and then commence the UX testing as well. Around August, we will be sending out instructions for the miners. Uh, Hero will be a miner in the first version. We'll be running a node as a miner in the first version um, of Hyperchains. Uh, this will include instructions, documentations, what you want to do in terms of the legal stuff, uh, what the incentives could look like, um, et cetera. Um, and we will publish those details as we inch closer towards that timeline. That brings us to the legal reviews, security reviews, and code audits that are really, really essential and are the gate check for us to go for a mainnet, successful mainnet launch. And that is very, very intense. Um, so we are in partnership with a couple of firms to help us uh, lead that. We want to make sure that we whatever we have on mainnet is thoroughly secure. Uh, and there are some ca caveats that come with the first MVP and we'll just, you'll find that information in the uh, primer video as well as the blog that will uh, be launched later next week. So Q1 2023, so early 2023, we expect a mainnet launch. Um, and then we will have multiple versions of hyperchains and it will evolve into its own being. Somewhere in between August and Q1, we'll also be kicking off research into the evolution of hyperchains, to say. Uh, so we'll be evolving that into a more decentralized option. So uh, we'll talk about that briefly in the next slide. Next one, please. OK. So here. Um, as you can see, um, the multiverse of hyperchains, as I like to say, uh, there's not going to be just one flavor of hyperchains on stacks. Uh, there will be a range of options uh, if we do this right, starting with the federated model that we have initially launching to a more decentralized version. And as we move towards more decentralized versions, the complexity of the solutions, the implementations will increase. So that'll take us a longer time to get to a truly decentralized nature of a layer two solution on stacks. And each of those hyperchains will have a corresponding uh, smart contract on layer one, as you can um, see here. So if we zoom in a little bit onto the relationship between the contract and the hyperchain is what you have here. So let me walk it through a little bit. Um, so this is a basic architecture of a hyperchain, you can see. Um, each hyperchain is controlled by a single layer one smart contract. Uh, interacting with the hyperchain is exactly like a different network on the Stacks blockchain, for example. The transaction formats, the RPC interfaces, uh, the Clarity VM will all still say the same. However, the difference between would uh, between those would be how do you interact with uh, with with the hyperchains. Uh, in addition to that, hyperchains will also support deposits and withdrawals, as you see there, um, through the layer one smart contract. So to deposit into a hyperchain, uh, users will have to submit a layer one transaction that you see at the bottom that invokes the deposit method on the smart contract on the right. Um, and similarly for withdrawals, when a user is finished uh, interacting with the hyperchains, they submit an L1 transaction that invokes a withdraw method again on the same contract. So while interacting with the hyperchain uh, users, there's an implicit trust. So they have to trust, the users have to trust the consensus algorithm of that hyperchain completely, which means um, that the hyperchains miners are fully, fully trusted by the users. Uh, it is important to keep uh, in mind though that as hyperchains evolve and there, there'll be more versions and flavors of it, uh, that is really crucial that the trust is paramount. 
Um, so if a hyperchain gives miners um, arbitrary control over assets in the hyperchain, those can handle deposits and withdrawals arbitrarily. So they have complete control over funds in the hyperchain. Um, so while hyperchains may present many, many benefits in terms of speed and latency, because you are, um, you're no longer on the main chain, you are all segued into your own lane to say, uh, users need to be aware of those trade-offs, right? Um, so the amount of trust um, that is required, as well as the funds that are being uh, used in that hyperchain, you need to be mindful of that. So it is really important uh, for that reason, because you need the trust that a federated trust model is really important and crucial. And over time, we'll iterate through that. So that's why the miners that you will see in the first version will be run by a few ex exclusive parties and that, that federated trust model is gonna be set up. Um, so the consensus algorithm, what happens in that federated trust model in the first version would be uh, the protocol that we'll be using is a BFT, Byzantine Fault Tolerance Protocol. So it'll be a coalition of miners. Um, each hyperchain block will be approved by a majority of the coalition um, and so on. And you can dive into more details uh, in the primer video as well as the blog that is upcoming. Um, so that's the gist of it. Uh, if you have any questions, want to dive deeper, join us on the Twitter space. This is chat, Discord chat, you know where to find us. Um, so yeah, looking forward to you all helping us test this. Wow, what an amazing overview. Thank you so much. Um, we, oh yeah, looks like Elena is also answering questions. Someone did have a question in the chat and put longly, it is, I, I think most users are expecting hyperchains way before Q1 2023 based on existing messaging. Do you guys agree? Put shortly, I think it's, when hyper chains. Um, I think to give us a little bit more color, I, um, we want to talk a bit more about that roadmap and why you can't hit the big red button and make it live tomorrow and about uh, how important it is to test something of this uh, significant of a accompaniment to stacks. And... So yeah, I, I can uh, I actually answer that and dive deeper uh, on that particular question. So first of all, we will be able to play around with hyperchains, build your use cases, and um, kind of tweak around that throughout this year, starting July, on testnet, right? So the big gap for the launch of mainnet uh, is essentially around the reviews and audits that you see there and the miners set up. So when we go to mainnet, this is it, right? So we want to make sure that we type all the loose ends. We are extremely secure. We're very, very particular about the security, auditing our code. Um, given the nature of the world of Web3 that we live in, and you're probably aware of what's surrounding us outside the Stacks ecosystem. So we want to be extremely cautious of that as well. Um, not to say that you won't be able to launch use cases and play around with it in testnet. So you'll still have a few months to kind of get that right. Um, and also what we haven't listed here, although there is no dependency whatsoever yet on the 2.1 launch, Ideally, that would be a good time frame for us to kind of also, uh, although we don't have it under our control as hero on when 2.1 goes live, but tentatively, it'd be a good transition for us to kind of rely on that timeline as well. Um, so when you, uh, I would also love to hear from you on the like earlier than Q1 time frame, um, what drove that, uh, it's, uh, you know, where, where the messaging was coming from, uh, I would be interested in hearing that as well, but early Q1, ideally, uh, first half of Q1, ideally will be on mainnet. Hope that answers your question and address your concerns. Awesome. Thanks for giving a bit of context there. I have some questions. Uh... Yeah, sure. Uh, just to try to understand the, the concept of hyperchains, uh, one of the aspects that uh, one would like to have in the, in the, in the chain is that uh, it's a process over the, uh, that uses the chain, the stack chain, blockchain, as a way to coordinate the actions of different uh, activities, you know, along the, al along the life of, of the, of the apps, you see. So, 
like like uh, a batch uh, order, you know, like a batch order. So especially useful for um, kind of mining or uh, awards and, and things like that. Is that the concept of like uh, having your, for example, our own uh, um, token has, uh, if you hold our tokens, you know, cross-check tokens, then, uh, for example, we can build a, a hybrid chain contract in order to manage that uh, mining or rewards uh, holding uh, for, for the people that hold our, our token. Is that a, a, a use case uh, for hyper chains or I'm completely mistaken? Um, so to clarify, the tokens that will be used within the hyper chains will still be stacks. If that's the distinction that you are. No, no, no. I mean, it's, it's, I mean that, for example, I want uh, people, you know, that uh, they hold their cross checks, uh, our tokens. Right. So then, um, so then I have like a kind of uh, algorithm in order to to reward the people that uh, hold those tokens. But of course, you put up the hyper chain that will will check certain events that will be happening on the Stacks uh, blockchain. But that, that is called hyper chain. That's why I, I'm trying to understand. Yeah. It's like a batch. Uh, in typical in, in processes, you have a batch uh, that has a, like a time execution that uh, normally executes in a server side. So this is, is that kind of similar to that or why would you use uh, hyperchains? That's a- So kind of yes and no, v a very good analogy there. So uh, when you say batch, so the, the blocks that are going to be in hyperchains would still be of similar status, right? Uh, you'll have a transaction that gets generated that will be in pending state, moves to a micro block and then gets pulled into an Akron block on the layer one stacks main chain. Um, so there'll be multiple micro blocks, very similar to the Bitcoin and the stacks relationship that you have there a, a level deeper, except that it'll be much faster because the miners here have to do relatively uh, considerably lesser work to conform transactions, right? Be because we're going by BFT protocol. So yes, in a, in a sense, it is batch that the micro block, there'll be multiple micro blocks that'll get pushed into one anchor block. However, once a transaction is in a micro block, it's almost guaranteed that it will be confirmed. Unlike what happens today in the stacks chain versus Bitcoin there, you could, uh, the micro block may or may not make it into an anchor block uh, or there could be some delay. However, uh, in relation to a hyper chains into stacks, uh, that won't be the case. It's almost guaranteed. So in that regard, that batch, essentially what you're saying is essentially a bunch of micro blocks that will uh, be pushed into or confirmed into um, the anchor block on the stacks chain. And with the finality guarantee that if there's a micro block, they'll always be making it into the anchor block. Does that answer your question? Um, I think the batch that you are referring to is more like coming from say Ethereum world where you have rollups probably is what you're referring to if I get it right. Um, there will be a flavor of that uh, towards a more decentralized version that I spoke about earlier. We would we would need to rely on more rollups because um, we've, we won't have that federated trusted pool of miners. You have to rely on more advanced cryptographic algorithms there like PCPs, ZKPs, et cetera. Hope that answers your question. Well, I understand that maybe it's not the, uh, what I, I was thinking about, but uh, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely go through the primer video that um, Aaron has put together that goes into much, much more detail there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I keep showing it off. Um, it was just uploaded this morning. It's oh. Aaron does a great job at distilling down a lot of so seemingly intense information, but uh, once you think about logically how the, the hyper chain is plugging in and having Aaron spoon feed it to you, it, it uh, makes a lot more sense. Um, amazing. Thank you for the great question there. Um, looks like Sabi is linking some resources in the chat too. Yeah. Do we have any more questions about hyper chains before I believe we move on to another topic? Can hyperchain anchor to Bitcoin blockchain? For the first version, not yet, uh, but eventually we are exploring those possibilities where we may do that. Um, 
I can neither confirm nor deny that at the moment, but right now, no. All right, she says, thank you. I think it's transitively anchored by hyperchains to stacks to Bitcoin, but no, not direct <laughs> plugging in I like yet. that. <laughs> and yeah, Elena did just uh, share a link to the flashy new forum post by Sarala. It's got a lot of great details in here, a little bit more comprehensive than the slides if you want to take a look at that. Yeah, that Elena is this Elena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like 10 Elena's. Everyone's Elena today. She's I very productive her. today. Um, awesome. Are we ready to plow forward onto the next topic? Cool. Cannot thank you enough, Sorala, for coming in, dropping some knowledge on hyperchains. I know everyone is eagerly anticipating the testing of it and mainnet launch of it and just experimentation with it uh, within their apps. Sabi, you want to take over? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm here. Yeah, so real quick on this one. So this is the third topic we, uh, we added to it's the last minute. Uh, someone just joined, let me admit them. Yeah, so this is about, um, you know, uh, the, you know, there is a, there is a stacks improvement proposal on this in the subject. It's generally, you know, the concept of, you know, tokens or, you know, fungible tokens or non-fungible tokens and the metadata associated with them. If if something were to change in those tokens for for any reason, whether it's it's business driven for your business model or something that's that's expected to happen asynchronously and, and because of some other upstream events and things like that, uh, there's no consistent and standard way of accomplishing that today. So this slide specifically speaks to some use cases there. So I mean, the first one is about that fungible non fungible token uh, scenario that I was describing early on. So if you were to like launch a token. Uh, with, with minimalistic metadata. And later after the launch, if you decide to like go back and update that metadata or enrich that metadata with more information or change some of the characteristics that were, that were presented at the very beginning. Uh, so that's one type of use case where this type of scenario or this type of standard way of publishing that notification and having to update that downstream is very useful. And then the other part is, you know, again, like it's very relatable. Very, uh, many, many folks are, uh, you know, familiar with NFTs, obviously. Uh, but if you were to like launch a project and if you were not going to reveal the artwork or the properties for that NFT, so you can do that, you know, after the launch, you know, in the future and go back and present those possibilities to like, you know, be that big surprising factor and things like that. So once again, this type of uh, use case can benefit from a standard way of uh, reacting to those types of changes and then reconcil reconciling to it eventually. Right, so these are types of scenarios, and we, we have uh, developers in, in, in businesses that, that have expressed interest wanting this type of capability in, in Stacks blockchain API. Um, but we, if we don't have a very, a very consistent way of accomplishing this. Uh, there's, there's a lot of backdoor, like, you know, sort of band aid kind of work that we have to do to like give them what they are uh, expecting to see, right, for, for these types of use cases. So that, that, that being the problem. So the hero uh, team, specifically Matt, Ruff, Matt and Raphael from the Stacks Blockchain API team, uh, had uh, have thought about this. Uh, you know, thought about like how do we solve this? How, how how can we do it in a more standard and a consistent manner? Uh, and on that regard, so they have proposed this um, proposal. It goes by the name Notifications for Token Metadata Updates. Uh, it can be found under Stacks Go repo. And the, stat, and the SIPs uh, repository, there's a pull request, uh, pull request that Matt and Raphael submitted. Uh, feel free to like check it out. Uh, there's more detail uh, as to what the use cases are, type of data structure the payload should should be presented with, and so that you know the Stacks blockchain API can react to those updates, and in an automated way, it can reconcile uh, to those changes and update the database and, and present the response the right way for these types of use cases. In, you know. At, at at will or on demand, so just want to like bring that out, uh, bring that out as an FYI for folks who are here. Uh, go join that discussion if this is something that might in, might might be of interest to you or might be something useful to you. Share your use case, describe those scenarios in that pull request so that we can amplify that uh, and, and and hopefully like fast track that uh, approval process too. Uh, but yeah, so just an FYI, that's topic three. 
I will stop there. Back to you, Joe. And as always, we will toot the GitHub horn from the rooftops. Uh, if you are ever looking for roadmap, timelines, open feature requests, reporting problems, if you just wanna chat with engineers, GitHub is the place to do it. Um, we've really invested a lot of time in making uh, standard templates for opening pull requests and having people be tuned there looking for new issues 24 seven. Um, it's really where the bulk of the engineering discussion and innovation is happening in Stacks. We really encourage you to check out github.com slash hero systems. What else we got going on here? Um, you can always filter by labels. Uh, there's a good first issue a label that we explicitly put on maybe lowest hanging fruit, easier beginner issues if you're looking to dive into contribution, but might be a little intimidated about uh, maybe that BNS contract I showed you earlier. There are some approachable, uh, more simple issues. Uh, there is something for everyone. It's choose your own adventure. We, we really need um, hardcore engineers writers, system thinkers, problem solvers, and there are good first issues there for all of those. Are you wondering how to engage with other heroes, superheroes? The Discord. For engineering, I will say GitHub for communications. Discord, the Stacks Discord is your one-stop shop. It is really the, um, the forum of Rome of everyone coming together and discussing the new innovative topics or sharing the product they just launched um, or collaborating to uh, find a workaround for an obstacle. There are channels for whatever your heart desires, API channel if you're trying to use NFT endpoints, there's the Explorer channel if you're having trouble with the sandbox and deploying code, um, there is a channel for everything and uh, make sure you put your conversation in the relevant or most specific channel that could be applicable. Sadness time. I don't want our, our monthly party to come to an end just yet. We have a couple more minutes here. I would love if anyone chime up with uh, any last minute thoughts or questions, um, any upcoming events for learning clarity. That is a very good question. And the answer is yes, there is a bunch of stuff coming up. Uh, Hero and Stacks will be attending Consensus in Austin, Texas, the big coin desk conference that used to be in New York. And I know there's a lot of clarity stuff happening down there. I am helping to moderate a uh, clarity workshop on June 9th at 2 p.m. Unfortunately, I think it might be in person, but I think there are some virtual opportunities that week. There is also a Clarity boot camp going on. We're working with the foundation right now to get all that curriculum and all the fun activations sussed out. Um, so there's definitely Clarity stuff coming up in the future. Also, um, would encourage you to take a look at the resources on either the Stacks docs or the Hero docs. The Clarity book is a really cool, almost like Clarity ebook resource that the foundation launched, super valuable basically the Bible of clarity. Um, Sabi posted a link to consensus there. Thank you very much. Uh, also a lot of great links were posted in the chat. Mark was going crazy there. There's uh, a link to the arbitrary transaction signing blog post, which has a lot of good details on the new features. Clarity got tools. Yeah, I am not sure how relevant it was, but I would know nothing about Clarity if that website didn't exist. It was a little in-browser IDE widget of sorts for hacking on Clarity. Um, I don't know how updated it is, but at the very least, it's great for demonstrating some of the lowest level Clarity uh, functionality and mechanisms. Uh, Teddy, Teddy must, must uh, he's the one that created that, Teddy. Uh, so he maybe maybe we can uh, push him a little bit in order to update that. <laughs> I will do just that. Yeah. Uh, that's a question, uh, Joe. Um, in, in, I like the new look of the of the wallet of the Hero wallet. Uh, they mentioned the some apps, uh, and, and and I would like to know how we make sure that our uh, two apps uh, can be in on that list. Uh, because it appears that it's stack.co uh, or something. Who's updating that uh, list? Because our apps are not there and have been 
uh, function working for a long time. And it's a pity that we are not there. Yeah, very true. Unfortunately, I think like any top projects on like stacks.co is like a static site that we are updating manually. I can ping the foundation about getting you on there. You should definitely be on there. What we need is the state of the dApps or the DeFi pulse, those those auto populating uh, lists of the major protocols or major apps out there. Um, I want a stacks dApp store. Uh, most definitely I do. Um, yeah, got a little work on registries and, and curated DAP lists um, now that a multitude are starting to emerge. Um, yeah, well, I'm going um, to launch a, a Stacks DAP uh, marketplace website now. You just gave me the idea. As for tangibly on Stacks.co, we can ping uh, the Stacks Foundation about uh, beautifying and updating that list with the latest and greatest projects. But like I said, I, I would love more, almost a third party curated website, uh, keeping track of the coolest apps. I know that I think Stacks on Chain or Stacks Novum Insights page does have a top projects page that, that has a couple of cool ones. I'll find the link and post in the chat. So I see Joshua Owen uh, raised his hand. Thank you for patiently waiting. Uh, please no ask your questions. Yeah, for sure. Um, Obsidian from Byzantium. I just have a quick question on the arbitrary signing of transactions. Uh, really just kind of a, this might be a dumb question, but just double checking. So with those, can you sign transactions for, for future transfers of tokens? I was reading through the blog. There was like one part, I don't know, it was just, wasn't super clear whether or not you could do that. So like an example use case would be, okay, I'm going to list an NFT on the marketplace instead of it listing into a map um inside the marketplace contract instead you have like an off-chain order book um, for that and then there's a future transfer you can you're basically signing for the ability to have a future transfer is that possible not yet it's in a plan we uh, are planning to expose a new method called sign transaction uh okay. currently we have sign message and sign clarity value you can also currently sign clarity like uh doppers or data and uh, the next activation will have a signed transaction. Fantastic, I appreciate it. Is yeah. there, um, I'm sure I can look at this in GitHub for roadmap. Is there like current roadmap for when we're thinking that might be released? I think I will let Mark um, uh, talk about it. Yeah, um, it's a good question. We don't have that um, sort of properly slid on the roadmap yet, but we've been discussing the last few weeks. Um, some context here is that we were so going back and forth about sort of enabling this with this sort of first release or not, but um, we want to make sure that folks aren't sort of surprised in signing transactions that they don't need to sign because transactions are pretty significant, right? Um, my best guess would be we could probably get this ready sometime in the month of June. I'm not making promises, but I think that's sort of the rough sort of um, sort of timeline consideration that we have in mind. Awesome, great work. Appreciate it. Stay in tune to the chat, looking for any last questions trickling in. I did find that one website. This is Stacks Novum Insights page, and there's a cool little top project section. It does also look static, and there's no like submit my project uh, link or anything, but you could reach out to the creators of this and potentially you get listed on it. Such a beautiful little collage of all of our ecosystem here. Interesting. So I was thinking about this one, Joe, since, um, uh, since we had this interesting conversation to its the end of the call, the last call, I didn't notice Merrick and uh, John, both of them are on this call. So I wonder if Merrick, John, uh, John, if you both can come online and mute. And if you want to ask those questions about the arbitrary message signing that you had in the last call. So since we have the subject matter experts here, Mark McGinn and a few others, uh, Andreas is also here, I believe so. Uh, feel free to come on up and um, ask those questions that you had the last week. I mean, last month. Yeah, sure. Um, no I, idea. I, I, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, I, this is John. Uh, I think last month, my only things that I talked about were the, I had some issues with the, uh, Stacks Explorer running in local mode uh, using the Clarinet Integrate. 
but I solved all those with help from the Discord. Yeah, that, that has been fixed. Yeah, I mean, the latest release or 0 0.30, I believe, should have that or 0.29, something like that. But OK, cool. Merrick, uh, you had some questions around games and, and things of that nature. So if you want to like uh, rephrase that for, for audience benefit and uh, invite uh, Mark and begin and others to engage and respond to that. Yes, we can do. Um, first off, like th this has been cool. It's been cool to see like my question asked and then to see like an answer this time and then the blog post as well. That's like nice to see and appreciate that kind of dialogue way of interacting with the knowledge base over at Hero. Um, so I'll, I'll ask my question again. Um, I'm going to ask a new question because I don't remember exactly what I said, but basically uh, what would my flow look like using arbitrary message signing? Like let's say I have a, uh, a desktop based game, right? And I want to, uh, you know, let's say, do some game action and then have that trigger, uh, you know, a, a wallet transaction. What would that flow look like? So my my players in a 3D little game, they do something. Um, do they get a ping then in their like wallet, um, and they can oh. sign that? What does that flow look like? Um, would be yeah. my way of phrasing that question. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Currently, we don't have a, a communication system between uh, the wallet and outside the wallet. Only between the wallet and the DAP connected to the wallet. So, in your example, you can redirect uh, a temporary solution. Would be to redirect the uh, send the user to a special link that is a uh, actually your own DAP, which is a kind of a mini version of your game, maybe hosted. Which, uh, which the user is already connected, and then make him sign the, the message. That's, this message will be uh, pop up uh, to the user. He will click the button sign. The, the signature and the public key will be sent back to your DAP. And at that point, you can do whatever you want with it. You can save it in a backend server and then communicate it back to, the, to your desktop app through another channel. And you can even verify that in your desktop app if you want, because you'll have the public key and the, the signature. Okay. So that's the current thing we can do right now. Yeah, I'll just add to that. I think um, when a desktop app sends the user to the browser, they could use a sort of one-time code as a parameter. Um, and then once the message is signed, um, the web page just has to do sort of like a, an API call to say, here's a message signed, and here's a code, and that can be relayed back to the, uh, the desktop app. Yeah, yeah, the server side uh, resource. Yeah, sweet. Thank you. <laughs> I think that, uh, yeah, that paints a picture. Thanks so much, both of you, for chiming up again. Um, glad we could demystify the mysterious. All right, we're winding down here. Just got three more minutes left. Speak now or forever hold your developer peace. We've got like one more if you want. <laughs> um, so like I've looked through, you know, um, the kind of like graveyard of, you know, uh, stack taps from before it was stacks when it was still block stack. Um, and I mean, I haven't looked too much into it, but I'm wondering like, could there be some sort of flow or like assistance of like, you know, bringing a lot of those apps, which looked pretty cool um, and, you know, bring them on to the stacks, you know, 2.0 network, or has there been talk about that at all or anything like that? Cause it's like a lot of good ideas at least and good apps that were made. Uh, yeah, good question. Yeah, it's a great question. Do you have any in mind from that era that you had your eye on? Like, not that I remember, but just what I saw and it looked cool. And I was like, I'm just been thinking about that. Like how much can we make that easier? Or has there been talks about like how to do that? I guess it's more my question. Have y'all talked about that at all? Or has that been a, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's an active question for us. I think, you know, that sort of uh, block stack era, there's a lot of emphasis on sort of decentralized storage via Gaia and identity via the, the block stack browser and block stack connected to, at the time. Uh, those technologies are still sort of around and available for us to to use to complement the sort of more recent stuff on chain, right? The smart contracts. Um, and so I think it's an actual question for us. I think, you know, long-term we're very much clear on the sort of on-chain and off-chain worlds have to work really well together. Um, and the question is just how do we sort of combine our sort of efforts 
going forward and sort of prioritize between those. Um, I think inevitably we're going to have sort of rich app experiences that we'll have to sort of draw from what we what we saw from block state stack sort of age, if you will, and what we've seen in the last year or so. So for discussion, I think if there's certain sort of app, apps you all have in mind that you want to sort of build that are similar to what you saw back then, you should reach out. Let's discuss it and talk about just what's needed. Yeah, absolutely. Totally feel that. Uh, it was kind of the legacy of the app mining era back in Blockstack 1.0. And you must remember that Stacks 2.0 uh, brought the Clarity smart contracts and all that stuff. So a lot of those Stacks or Blockstack 1.0 apps were kind of just using authentication and um, their Blockstack ID for login and credentials. And it is a whole different beast to be using smart contracts for your backend and interacting with the blockchain. So we have seen some projects transform and gone from just using Blockstack for auth to fully integrated Stacks uh, DAP. Uh, Sigil is doing big things at transforming. They were a, a 1.0 block survey also. Um, Wilson and over there. Check doing... and our, ours. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was waiting to give you a shout out until the end because you have your VNS name. I was going to be like, huge shout out to Philip for his VNS name. With Just web integration, some... with web integration, integrated to the web. Yeah. Oh, yeah, full stack, absolutely. Um, and it's a subdomain because it's not app. Um, yeah, I'm even struggling to find the old list of all the app mindings because now you're right. I want to headhunt and go out to all these apps and, and get them to, to launch on Stacks 2.0. But um, I think uh, what the app mining era demonstrated was if the incentives are right, people will build things. So that's just what we're trying to recreate on Stacks 2.0. Uh, find the Goldilocks zone of ease of developer experience and users hungry to use apps and security and functionality with the actual tech and the blockchain. Um, instead of just throwing money at app miners to create things, we want a, a much more sustainable, scalable DAP ecosystem on 2.0. All right, friends, I'm so sorry, but I got to cut us off. Things to do, blockchains to build, DAPs to develop. Cannot thank you enough for everyone coming out. I saw us peak out at 35 there. It was 10 more than last time. Um, had a lot of fun with y'all. We'll see you next month. Um, and we will circulate all the materials. Uh, check the GitHub repo for slides and notes. I'm going to be badgering all you for community topics over the next month. And stay tuned to the YouTube for the recording. That's all we got today. Developer heroes, unite.